have you seen it snowing ever it no not how, yet when the snow falls even i have never seen can you beat it till uh, can you believe till i was 59 years old before that i had never seen snow fall i had seen snow fallen ha huh. you know See. so the when it is all uh, white that i had seen but i had never seen it coming down from the sky the live experience you the, never yes, had okay. falling yeah you know the live experience is there of touching the snow and huh, picking no, it up it, and yes. making balls and thing, all that but never seen actually falling from the sky <laughs> okay. and then when i in at that time when i went to this place where it was snowing all the time it was snowing all the time so i was in the middle of that snow wind you know and the temperatures were so cold it would go down to minus temperature and there it was snowing all the time sleeting there's a term called sleeting where you know it is a, like it's kind of a rain and snow mixed up so it's melted snow with a lot of okay, rain that okay. beats down on you it was i can tell you it was How you was know it was exciting in the beginning yeah in the beginning it was exciting but uh, after <laughs> that it was quite miserable because I'm you know sure. the sleeting and the rain that comes with it it can come it looks as if it's coming in a horizontal direction so even an umbrella is useless so you are no option but to get better it holds uh, also a lot of things yeah, no yeah, you yeah, have to yes. be confined to a place yes so and then uh, walking on the roads can also be dangerous slippery because it becomes very slippery because otherwise there is roughness on that road uh, the pavement and on the Obviously, paving stones yeah. or whether it is gravel or something there is a roughness which uh, provides friction to your motion you can probably just on. skate Yes. So <laughs> when it has snowed, or when there is that thin, thin layer of water, and then it freezes. Correct. So then there is no friction at all. It's Correct. absolutely so plain and smooth, well. and so you can slip and have a fall. <laughs> Correct. So that is what happened. But then there was another yeah. funny experience that I had, and that is that I saw after a few days, I noticed that I'm sleeping a lot. Okay. I was. Were you tired? tired? that's what i thought initially that maybe it is the jet lag and it's going to wear off after some days but that didn't happen and how I mean, long were you there i was there for about fairly long time till the winters were over and it was summers according to that place which so few was months. almost near uh, canada it was okay. so it was in that uh, zone where it is that cold in that geographical zone and uh, but i was sleeping so much and then i uh, it was not jet lag i Obviously. realized after a few days that it can't be jet lag for so long and so then i asked you know when i made friends and then I, this topic came up and then i asked that why do i sleep so much over here mm. and then i was told that this could be this may be because of uh lack of serotonin because the sunlight is not there the sunshine is not that bright okay hmm. it's so the you daylight is more. there yes because i am not getting enough serotonin my body is not producing serotonin a happiness hormone is a neurotransmitter that's produced in the brain exposure to sunlight stimulates parts of the retina that then triggers the brain to produce serotonin on bright sunny days people have higher serotonin level But you were not the only one who was not getting so enough sunlight. So maybe others are also. They were all sleeping a lot. <laughs> That is a good question. I, either you get used to it, you know, your body oh. get used to it, or you maybe Adapted. you compensate in some other way. Because it's not that serotonin is being produced only inside your brain. Okay. So it is possible that you are compensating in some other way or something. Okay. Okay. So yes. So, so maybe your body was not adapted to it exactly when you moved exactly there. Okay. absolutely so that's possible that my body was adapted to the conditions you can see how in india you can just you can see the sun I that agree. is you know blazing down on yes. us all the time yes. but uh, that you know brought me of course we know that uh, the importance of sun like yes uh, it helps us to make yeah. vitamin d which d is so yes, important which is so important so important so that and calcium absorption also cannot yeah. happen unless you have vitamin d in your body exactly so exactly Correct. so but this was a new component about which i never knew. serotonin serotonin yes. yes yeah that's true so that was one thing and then that is what brought me you know that really actually brought in the importance of sunlight Correct. that how important sunlight is otherwise you used to think that without sunlight you know plants can't 
make their own food. There will be no photosynthesis, so that will be there. There's more but to it. There's, there's, yes. There's more yes. to it. Okay. Yeah. But uh, then the other aspect is that uh, it, if there is more sunlight, excess sunlight, then... Then you won't sleep at all. <laughs> no, no. It's not about the sleep part. But uh, oh, it can be to some yes, allergies yes, if you're, skin skin if, you're out in the, if you're out in the sun for too long, uh, ah, then, get it. then what happens? The skin burns, allergies, yes. or the UV rays that are exposed yeah. to can cause yes. problems. Yes. So those problems could be there. So then, uh, what is the optimum level of sunlight that one needs? Is it same for all? Um, Maybe the requirement is different for different people and in different areas that Correct. is also possible. Correct. But then uh, how, you know, what should we do consciously? What should we do so that the sunlight is neither harmful nor we are deprived of it? Okay, so we here living in India, we are getting enough sunlight, I guess. Mm. But we need to decide that how much should we expose ourselves into, right? Right. So... What should be the right time to go out? That we need to decide. And for how long? And for how long? Correct. Correct. Okay. So, if when the sun is blazing down on us, at that time, you know, it is, uh, it could be harmful because the UV rays would be too strong. When the sun is overhead, you mean? the sun is overhead. And if you are there for a very long time, if you are roaming around. So, that's why we are advised that you must wear sunscreen to yes. avoid because it could lead to cancer of the skin correct. or correct, correct. Uh, some other such Skin rashes, allergies, if yes, not something yeah, very severe, yes, this yes, is absolutely, what can happen. Absolutely. absolutely. So, best is that you catch the morning sunlight when it is so So, strong. go as early as possible. Uh, yes, you go as early as possible, but don't go when it is still dark. I have seen many people who go for morning walks when it is still dark. Ah, even I go at around 4.30. <laughs> so, do you think that's a wise thing to do? The problem is that uh, you know when photosynthesis takes place, that's the time when uh, plants produce the oxygen. Correct. So at night, what are the plants doing? They're they're doing just respiration. The just carbon dioxide. Is carbon being, dioxide is being exhaled. Huh. So that means what is there in the atmosphere? More carbon dioxide. More carbon dioxide. And, and when the, I go there in the morning, when the sun is not still out, still not out. So there is more carbon dioxide more carbon in the dioxide atmosphere. In the atmosphere. Which is not good for me. Which is not good. So you have to, you must wait till daylight breaks. Oh. And the process is reversed and oxygen is being produced by the trees so that you can benefit from that. When you are walking, you should not take a walk in when the presence so of a lot of carbon dioxide. Obviously, I shouldn't. So you have to wait for that time. So evenings are better, I evenings, guess. Evenings, in that sense, evenings could be better because the sun is not overhead. Correct. And, uh, and a lot of oxygen probably will be there. Of, there should be. There should be a lot of oxygen. But it depends where you are staying. If okay. you are living in a area which is uh, congested. Alright. Congested with vehicles. Yes. So that means there is a lot of pollution in the air. Alright. So it, that means that those gases have accumulated. And the pollution. And the pollution, the pollution is at particles. maximum. At, is at its maximum peak by in the evening. evening. By evenings. So, when is the right time to go? <laughs> That's a, yeah. morning. Morning? Morning when? after daybreak. After the daybreak. After daybreak. At that time, that is the best time to go, safest time. Okay. Got your point. So, and that is what has been always said, you know, that you go for a morning walk. Oh. Morning walk. So, morning walk means when it is. Yeah, sun has risen. Sun has risen. Evening walks people don't take because then at least you are protected from the. Harsh sunlight, sunlight. hard sunlight and the harmful effects. But the best sunlight. time I would agree to you is morning. Morning. When the day morning breaks and it's earlier in the morning. morning. Okay. Okay. Night time could be taken. But in the evenings, if you're in a if you're living in an area where the it's not that bad, then it's alright. Yes, correct. I agree. Then you can go. Hmm. You can go and play in the park. Evening is the time when we go and play and we do we do. But then you're right, you need to see which so area you, you are. Which in. Area you are in. You shouldn't end up taking yes. in more pollution. Yes. Then. So then maybe you can walk a little bit more and find a place where there are more trees and it's a more, you know, uh, not so much uh, traffic is there. Correct. You know, so that you can, so by traffic, I mean the vehicular traffic. Yeah. 
Okay. So that is something that we must always keep in mind. Okay. And this I must tell you about a very interesting episode that happened. Uh, what like what could go wrong if you don't if you are deprived of if just think that if there is no sun then what will happen? All these vitamin D will not be formed in my body, and I'll have to take supplements probably. Supplements, yes. And then as we talked about serotonin, mm -hmm. that may also and not be formed. That, that is also yes. And so there has been a very interesting case, and that is the a uh, unique case which happened uh, in Pakistan, mm -hmm. and there were two brothers. Who were eventually they were given the name of solar kids. Now, uh, what had happened to them was that they would be fine during the daytime, you know, okay. running around, doing everything absolutely normal. But as soon as it would be evening, they would become absolutely, you know, stiff. They wouldn't be able to even move their hands and feet. So it was a big, huge mystery. In the beginning, people thought that maybe they are just, you know, fibbing. They're trying to. Uh, pull up something or just fooling or just pretending or something around. like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. just something like that. But uh, eventually they found out that this was not the case. And uh, after a lot of tests and diagnosis and all that, it was found that this is because they were they were unique in this way. There was some genetic reason or something like that for which you know they were not able to move. They were able to move around only and become normal only during the sun. When the sun was shining. So is it because of serotonin? Yes. Well? So they were given some supplements. So why was the body not able to store? Store maybe. Something like which is which was a very mysterious kind because of Because Pakistan thing, experiences yeah. good amount good of amount daylight. So almost daylight they were to fine. India. They were, yeah. That is why daylight they were fine. Yeah. As soon as it would be dark. As soon so, as it would be oh, dusk. They would have this problem. They had other siblings also. They didn't have this. But these two brothers. Okay, uh, so they were called the soul. You must read about it. You will find it plenty of uh, references in the uh, on the internet, and you can read about their case. Very interesting and a unique case. Okay, are they fine now? Like they they take supplements yes, now and they take the fine. supplements and they are fine. Yes. Okay. It's, it, it was a very simple thing actually. So where you went that uh, America? That, uh, yes, I went. I Do people USA. take supplements there also? There's oh, another yes. Another they, take, they take supplements. Yes, they take supplements. That's an interesting question you asked me. They take supplements uh, for, vitamin, for vitamin D and I also started taking that. Okay. Yes, so for vitamin D people do take and then there are also solar lamps which you can use. In the houses? Yes, in the houses. You could use it for some time so that you get that... Uh, sun rays and you can have that so it's like you're creating an artificial uh, sun inside the room so this brings me to a question all these uh, people who go to beaches for getting themselves tan is yes. it just to get the tan or they also are aware that they're get, make, making serotonin Maybe. in their body i don't know about individuals who is aware and who is not uh -huh. but the need is there Okay. And so this it's is not just uh, not just tan. it's not just the tan. It's not just the a, a kind of a cosmetic kind of a thing. It is it's actually important for it them. It is important for everyone. Oh God, right? Yeah. I used to think it is just something yeah. you know Initially, very cosmetic. Yes. They yes. look better yeah, they, as just for the looks. Just for the looks. Oh, yeah. this brings a new perspective. Yes, absolutely. very weird. Absolutely. So um, these people and yes, some of them did tell me that because uh, there were some others who had moved in there later on in life. Where this area where uh, I was there, and where there were there was lack of sunlight, and uh, I was told that even their teeth fell out because of lack of deficiency of vitamins. vitamins. Oh, vitamin D. Vitamin D. So calcium, calcium absorption. So they really need to yes. take this yes. sun bath. Sun bath. Yes. That's very important. Yeah. Or you. Take supplements. Probably we don't appreciate it enough that we get true, true, too much of sunlight. True, true. Okay. Did you know that low sunlight may give rise to colon cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer? Sun exposure, that is UV radiation, treats skin conditions like scoliosis, eczema, jaundice and acne. Sunlight can be potential treatment for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis that is RA, systemic lupus, erythematosus, inflammatory bowel disease and thyroiditis.